It's <laughs> <laughs> the advantage of that 240. That's a 240 right there. That's longer. You get that. All right. <laughs> Today we're talking about kayaks for deer hunting. And we've got three different ones here. This essentially is going to be a buyer's guide. Basically everything you need from putting it on top of your car to getting in the tree stand we're going to cover here. And we'll have links in the description. Click those links. Helps us out because we get a little percentage of that if you buy from that link. So we use water access as much as possible when deer are turkey hunting, whether it be through a, a lake, river, creek. So kayaks open up a lot of great opportunities for access, but today we're gonna to focus on the kayaks themselves and uh, yeah, what, what to look for when you're buying one. We're gonna go down the line, just talk about each one, kind of the differences and advantages, disadvantages. This one is a 12 foot Jackson Cuda. I hunt fish pleasure kayak off this thing. And this is a more expensive kayak, sit on top. It's, I guess, considered a high-end fishing kayak. So that, that kayak's more like an investment because you mm -hmm. fish a lot, use it for hunting. Oh yeah. The advantages that I feel like with the sit on top kayak, and that goes for all sit on top kayaks, is the ability to put stuff on top of it. A lot of times we've got tree stand on the back, maybe bow, extra clothes tied to the front. If you've got a sit on top kayak, a lot of times they have inside storage. You can put stuff in there and keep it dry. And in the links below, we'll have some variations of sit on top kayaks as well. I think one of the common misconceptions about these holes, these are scupper holes. And the reason that these are here is just to keep water from sitting on the deck. A lot of people ask, do you get wet with those holes? Or, you know, should I buy plugs for them? You can buy scupper hole plugs. There'll be a link below. And that will keep the water from coming in here, but the purpose of these things is to get the water out when it comes in. I would say most times when paddling, even in a sit-in, you're getting wet from the paddle more than anything. Mm. It's just dripping on your lap. That's probably about the only way you're gonna get wet. This seat, as most seats on a sit-on-top kayak, is kind of elevated. So with this big kayak, I think this thing's like 85 pounds. You know, it is heavier if you're gonna be going by yourself. It can hold more gear, but it's gonna be harder for you to get off your car or out of the bed of the truck and drag it down to the water. You can do it by yourself, but it's gonna be a lot more strenuous than just grabbing one of these lighter sit-in kayaks. Maybe talk about the performance quick. Like how well does that track? Tracks unbelievable. With it being heavy and you know not, I guess, super long, it makes it very easy to maneuver around, but also it stays really straight. I mean, I can be floating down the river and not grab the paddle for quite a while, standing up casting or glassing, whatever I may be doing. Because some of the shorter kayaks, like we'll, we'll talk about a little bit mm -hmm. later, uh, tracking can be an issue. Like oh, when yeah. you're paddling, it, the, the nose will want to go, you know, kind of right and left. It's hard to stay real straight, but with mm -hmm. uh, you know, higher end kayak like that, your tracking is going to be a lot better. Again, the thing about this thing is since it's so heavy duty, it's extremely sturdy. Like I can pretty much do this kind of stuff on it and not fall off of it. Where this, or a sit-in in general, you've got a little bit more tippage to it, but once you get comfortable with any kayak, you're gonna be able to get places just as well with this thing. Okay, so on to the next kayak. This is the one I've had for about three years now. I really like it. It's a Perception Sound 10.5, and I went into buying this kayak with the thought of, you know, I wanted something that's affordable. I wasn't sure how much I was gonna use it, uh, also something that's relatively lightweight, that's easy to get yeah. in and out of a vehicle, but also something that has a, you know, a fair amount of storage that I could get backpacks, tree stands, and gear onto. Also storage underneath, uh, places to stow away more gear where it will stay dry. And this has performed really well. Just go through the kayak quickly here. Uh, it's a sit-in as opposed to a sit-on-top. You can stay dry, uh, but I can't stand up in this and you know, either fish or you know, do much moving around mm -hmm. like you can in yours. Right. This is pretty much just to sit in. Uh, seat's real comfortable, uh, little storage compartments for you know, probably for fishing gear and stuff like that. I uh, think the coolest part about this kayak versus some other sit on top, or sit inside, sorry, is that you've got this seat. So many kayaks, like the very, very lowest end, which is still okay, it makes them lighter, don't really have a seat. This thing's got that yeah, comfortable it's got seat, got padded that seat and there's, comfortable back on it. Yeah, there's sometimes where you know, we'll be paddling 45 minutes, an hour or more to get back into some of these spots. So uh, it's comfortable. And this has a fair amount of storage. Got the bungee straps here to where I can put backpacks, uh, tree stand, 
and sticks and all that and keep it secure. These straps, these little bungees that are built in, mine also has that. I would highly recommend if you're gonna get one that you plan on packing stands or any type of gear on. If you got these built-in straps, it really makes it handy. You can just slap stuff in there and it's not gonna come out of there as long as you don't totally roll the kayak. Yeah, I think I've had, you know, backpack, tree stand, sticks, all of that, mm -hmm. and then I'll either use bungee cords or ratchet straps mm -hmm. to go over the top of it, and that keeps it all secure, and I can get everything I need in and out of the woods. As far as getting a deer out, I don't know if your kayak might accommodate a deer. I think yours got, you guys got that doe. We put, a, we put a small doe on the back of your kayak. I don't know that this one, this may get a small doe out yeah. as well, but um, you know, that's something to consider is, you know, if you're using a kayak that can't accommodate a deer on the kayak itself, you may have, there, there's a bunch of different ways. Somebody actually, or a couple of people have actually told me that they've literally just tied a rope to the deer, put a life, a jacket, life jacket on it. Right. And then it just, they just paddle it right out and it's super yep. easy. I yep. mean, I, I guess I'd never really considered that. What we had talked about in the past was putting one on a kayak and then dragging it with another one, but if you can just put a life jacket on the buck, that'd be pretty cool. Yeah, life jacket, <laughs> another small inflatable kayak. I've yeah. heard people doing that. Yeah, so there's a lot of different options. So like I said, I, I really like this kayak. It's a 10 and a half footer, weighs about 45, 50 pounds. I can easily get it in and out of a vehicle, up on top of a vehicle. I mean, it's, it's this light. Yep. You can just pick that thing up and put it right in the bed of your truck, on top of your car, whereas this thing is definitely easier with two people. And I think this has kind of been our favorite deer hunting kayak so far. I mean, Zach's has a lot of advantages. Like, like he said, he uses it for a lot of different things. We like this one because it can get all the gear, lightweight, easy to take by yourself. It's relatively inexpensive. Mm -hmm. I think it was $450. There's a lot of these kayaks on Amazon, anywhere from two to five, six hundred dollars and that's kind of what we consider the middle of the road type kayak. All right, so on to the third one. We're gonna move on to Ted's nine and a half foot Sun Dolphin, the Journey 10 SS. Super sport. Super sport. <laughs> and apparently it doesn't come in this nice camo job. Ted, <laughs> Ted did a, he, he dressed it up himself. It's unbelievable, it looks good, buddy. How much did this cost, Ted? Uh, 300. 300? So I guess this is low middle of the road pricing. New, 300 bucks, sit on top. This advantage of this kayak is it has no bottom seat and there's actually scupper holes right in the seat. Whoever decided to do that, uh, I think failed because if there's no seat to elevate you, you're gonna get wet and that's one disadvantage that Ted says this kayak has. Again, you can buy the scupper plugs for it. I would say if you're gonna buy a kayak, it's definitely something to look into of how comfortable the seat is. Yeah, storage-wise, it has a lot going for it, though. Got a compartment here. You can put stuff down in there, and then you can also put stuff. You can put stuff in there. You got your. Uh, what do we have here? Registration. Registration. <laughs> got your your instructions. There you go. That's what it looked like before <laughs> Ted did his fantastic paint job. And then you got your you got your extra rod holder. Again, storage is nice on these sit-on-tops. Like we said, a lot of times they're going to have in-haul storage that you can keep stuff dry. And on this kayak, when you're sitting in here, you can also put stuff on up on the front. The only other thing that, about this kayak that's gonna give it a little bit of a disadvantage over one that's a little bit longer is the tracking. Like Greg mentioned earlier, when you're paddling something that's this short, it's got a tendency to do a lot more of that than you know the very long kayaks. Yeah, so advantages of this kayak, price, mm -hmm. size, weight, very light, very easy to maneuver. Storage in the back, inside, and outside storage. Disadvantages, tracking is not that good on this shorter kayak. The seat is not really existent and has the holes, the holes. in there, which you can get the plugs for. But overall, not quite as stable mm -hmm. as the other ones. It yep. doesn't track quite as well. Okay, on to the middle of the road mm -hmm. kayak. Pros. Light. Light, 45, 50 pounds. Good seat on this specific kayak. I like the fact that you can get stuff up in there, mm -hmm. up in the front and in the back. Plenty of storage. Storage all over the place. You got some rod holders, guys, and that's important to me. <laughs> this thing's light. This is probably the lightest one. A lot of your sitting inside kayaks are going to be the lightest ones. This specific kayak, also, we didn't touch on earlier, has really good handles. Yep. Super yep. Easy, easy to for carry two people with to two carry. people. Yep. And this is a good one for somebody who's just going to use it by themselves. Yep. You know, I, I do that a lot. It's easy to get in and out. 
mm -hmm. of the vehicle and or up on top of vehicle if necessary. Yep. So and for price, this is relatively mm -hmm. affordable. About yeah. 450 bucks and you know cheaper if you can find it on sale. Yep. Disadvantage, not gonna be able to stand up in this thing, but you know, it is still a very stable kayak. Right. It doesn't have the ability to keep things completely dry where these sit on top kayaks, you can put stuff inside the hull. There's no way it's gonna get wet. It, what you can do with this is use a dry bag mm -hmm. or something and put your gear that you don't want to get wet up in the front or the back of it. Yeah, that's what I'll typically do is put it in a dry bag and then store it you know, behind the seat or up you know, between my feet. Okay, on to top of the line. First thing, disadvantage wise, is gonna be the weight of this thing. Uh, if you're one guy, it's, it's tough to get on and off a vehicle out of a bed of a truck. If you gotta drag it any amount of ways, you know, you're not gonna wanna really drag this thing too far. But for that, you can get carts to yeah. help wheel the kayak where you're going. Yeah, there's basically wheels that go right through the scupper holes and you can just drag it along if you got a nice trail or something or a boat ramp. Another disadvantage again is the price on this thing. If you're not gonna be using it all the time, it's probably not worth it. I use this thing constantly. It's worth it to me, but if I wasn't gonna be using it for fishing as much, I would definitely be on one of these middle of the road or even, I guess, the very low end kayaks. But as far as advantages go, I mean, this thing's heavy duty. You can mm -hmm. get a lot of gear on here. Oh yeah. We fit tons of, you know, stuff on the outside of it, on the back and the front. The whole inside is storage, so you can stuff things, you know, all the way into the middle of it. It's also got this storage here where I put all my fishing stuff. All this stuff is airtight. The only way that it's going to get wet is if you get a hole in the kayak, which is pretty hard to do. I guess another advantage would be if you were going to use this for like fishing per se, you mm -hmm. can stand up, yeah. cast, and... Um, super, I mean, it's super stable. I, like, like I said, I, you have a really hard time falling, and out, falling out of it. I have done that, but I was just being a fool and <laughs> leaning over to get a fish or something. This thing's going to track better than just about any other kayak, and all around it's a good boat, but again, you know, if you're not going to be using it constantly, it's not worth spending the extra money. Unless you just got money laying around, which we don't. Nope. And when we do that, that means we're, that means peanut, we, peanut butter sandwiches. That's <laughs> Dishing out sandwiches. <laughs> cheap sandwiches. One last advantage, the seat, you're not probably going to beat it. It's like sitting in a lawn chair or sitting in a camp chair. So to wrap up, you know, there's all different style kayaks. You can go from high-end, sit on top, high-end fishing kayak all the way down to models. I know I have friends that have bought sun dolphins like this for like a hundred bucks. And there's a lot of accessories to go along with yeah. them too. There's a lot of things you need from paddles, life jackets, you pads, know, dry bags. Foam pads to put on top of your car if you don't have a truck. All those things are going to make it easier to get out on the water and we've got links to all those things down below. Hope you enjoyed this video. That's it for this one. If you haven't subscribed, please do so. Tell your friends, your family, tell your, tell your grandparents for sure, right? Everyone. I mean, tell... Your dog. dog. Yep. I mean, My dog loves watching. But that's it for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm going to go fight Ted. Ted! <laughs> yes! <laughs>